What 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 Hi folks and welcome to Saturday Morning Samo Flange. My name is Matt. My name is Mikey. And you can call me the Grundle. <laughs> what the? Wow. Okay. Uh, uh, our good friend is here who wasn't here last week, so we are now complete. Hi Grundle. Hiya folks. <laughs> we actually formed Voltron. We did. Now. As long as I now, formed the head. I think you're the Grundle. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, beforehand it was just me and the princess here, but mm -hmm. uh, now that we have all, all three of us, so we're... Sweet! <laughs> we're pretty good to go. You might call us a Triforce. Ooh. Ooh. Folks, Happy New Year to the both of you. Happy New Year, Matt. Happy yeah. New Year. It is a good New Year. And I wanted to mention something. We didn't mention on the last podcast... But the holiday creep, as it comes now in September, you've seen holiday decorations, at least I have at Walmart. September 16th, I marked the date when holiday, there's another holiday creep coming out. Uh, last week, it was the day after Christmas, uh, the missus and I were going to Target, and you will not believe what they had out. Valentine's Day. Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. Valentine's candy, mm -hmm. the teddy bears. Mm -hmm. Valentine's Day on December 26th. Now, let me ask you a question. Are you really going to buy chocolates and have them stay there for like two months in your closet? I don't... No. I'm married. I'm not going to buy that at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the smart people would do? The smart people, instead of buying the expensive Valentine's candy, they would buy the cheap 50% off after Christmas Christmas candy, Absolutely. then give that to their loved one on February 14th. That's the smart play. Or the Valentine's You're giving away my game plan. Anyway. Uh, hey. Hey. Hey-yo. I hope the <laughs> missus isn't listening to this. <laughs> 2013 chocolate tastes just as good at 50% off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does, and it tastes better to your wallet. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so we're here to talk about the movies we're most looking forward to in 2015, and each of these guys have made a list. Now, I have not made a list because when I say looking forward to, when I think about that phrase, there is only one movie I'm actually looking forward to seeing. That doesn't mean there's movies that's coming out that I will enjoy seeing, there are two movies coming out. Mikey just reminded me yes! that I do want to see. Yes. Did you, you see know, the preview? I missed, I missed that one. Anyway. Just interject. Did you see the preview? No, not yet. It's excellent. Okay. All right. I'm two not, movies. I'm There's not. two movies that Matt wants to see this year. But we're talking about our top five right now. So, Matt, continue. And I want to see, because Mikey obviously knows one, but I want to see if anyone guesses the other one. Because it's not, I mean, it is a blockbuster, but... I don't know if anyone else is looking forward to seeing it. Anyway, so we'll go ahead and start off with, yeah. We'll start. Percy. We'll let the Grundle go first since yeah. he didn't get any airtime no. in 2014. All right. Well, one movie that Nipsey's looking forward to is um, Goosebumps. Goosebumps. Yes. <laughs> any respectable child of the 90s is going to be looking forward to that. Okay, let me tell you something. Uh, Mikey and I, we are Gen X. Mm -hmm. Generation X. So mm -hmm. Goosebumps missed the boat for nope, us. No, never watched You it. are a millennial, mm -hmm. or Generation Y, whatever, whatever you prefer to be called, and you loved Goosebumps growing up. Well, let me say something about my generation, and I, I, far be it for me to be the ambassador of the millennial generation, but this one coming up behind us is the generation of opinions, and they're the generation that has no business talking in the first place. <laughs> And I already sound like an old dude about this because, you know, I, you know, I think you, you peak these days at like 21. So, I mean, I, I think I can sound like an old dude. So you grew up reading Goosebumps, watching I did. Goosebumps? I did. My teachers made me read and that's what I chose to read. So this particular movie, what, uh, is it live action? Is it yeah, uh, cartoon? Well, I'll I, I be honest with you, I don't know much about it other than Jack Black is playing R.L. Stein. Oh, I just so R. L. Stein is. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I was a fan growing up, and I used to watch it coming home, and uh, get home from school, and eat some Dunkaroos, and turn on Fox TV, and watch Goosebumps and Beetleborgs. Well, now you can watch you some Goosebumps. What? What? Do you know when it comes out? 
I, I think they it's sometime in the like summer or okay. fall summer 2015. Sounds like, a, a, sounds like a, a summer movie. Yeah, I looked at a lineup and I don't know. It had like a it's like tentative, so I don't know how you know set they are in the time period. Do you think that year. Jack Black will sing some sort of Goosebumps theme song? I certainly hope so because yeah. that Goosebumps theme song from the original TV series. What if he remade that? Will it be the best song in the world? That song may not be the best song in the world. It could only be a song about the best song in the world. That's true. A tribute. Just a tribute. Mm-hmm. A tribute. That's right. Hey, Mikey, what's your first movie? Well, routine? I'm just going to start off by saying there's a lot of movies this year. Most of you already know all the ones. You can just Google it. It's easy. We've all got the Google in our pocket these days. But the first one that I'm looking forward to, a little obscure, is Mad Max Fury Road. I've heard about that one. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I'm slightly interested. It doesn't have Mel Gibson, right? It does not have Mel Gibson. Not even as a guest star. Not even as a guest star. And He's... I don't like that. But what's interesting about this movie is that it's written and directed by George Miller, who did all three of the original movies. So it has that pedigree. I mean, it would be... Okay. Well, I was going to say it would be the same thing as... Uh, George Lucas coming back into a Star Wars, but then again, if he did that, it'd be trash. It'd probably be the same thing as, let's say, James Cameron coming back and doing Terminator. It would have a certain feel, a certain look. Nobody Without else is, Arnold. Uh, well, he might, because Arnold no, is no, apparently just, in the new saying, one. I'm, I'm, just say, I'm just saying, if James Cameron did one without Arnold, this is what Mad Max feels like with me without Mel Gibson. Right, I can see that. But, on the flip side, in my back pocket, I have Tom Hardy. And I think Tom Hardy is an excellent actor. Mm. Just as long, Matt, as he doesn't do this voice when he talks in Mad Max. That's another conversation. That's All another right. conversation for so, another day. But check it out. Mad Max Fury Road. That's my first choice for an excellent movie of the year. And if you haven't seen the trailer, look it up. That trailer will indeed give you goosebumps. <laughs> oh, and to your court, CJ. What's go. the next one? All right. Um, Fast and Furious 7. You must live in West Monroe. <laughs> I'll, and I'll tell you, man, I was. I love those movies. I don't care. I love them. I'm with you, man. It's on my list, too. But you know, it's called Furious 7. They keep Furious changing 7, the name. Yeah, yeah now it's well, called Furious the, 7. Wasn't the last one like Fast? Well, there was a Fast 5. Yeah, Fast 5, yeah. Fast 6, and now yep. Furious 7. Furious 7. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Jason Statham's in there to kick some ass, so. I feel you, man. Like, it's on my list. It's a guilty pleasure of mine, too. Like, I made fun of it last week, but I was always, I've always one of those people that does go see I'm those. I think you can agree with me. It's a, it's a popcorn movie. Well, sure it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's no. fun. I, I, I enjoy watching those once. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then I'm done. I mean, with the, with the addition of The Rock, The Rock, you know, put a lot of um, uh, spice into these movies. It kind of infused re-energized it. Yeah, yeah he definitely series. re-energized. And I'm an old school wrestling fan. I like The Rock, so I'm with you on that one. And so. Paul Walker's last movie, you know, like, God love well, Paul Walker. Well, The Rock Walker. is the most electrifying man in sports entertainment. Yeah. So. And racing cars is a sport, and movies are entertainment, so it's like a match made in heaven. But you have to think about three of the most amazing domes going together and find each other in one movie. You got Jason Statham, you have The Rock, and you have Vin Diesel. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. bald on bald on bald, it's going to be awesome. Oh, yeah. Bald on bald. Uh, Mikey, what is your next? My movie? number two movie is Inside Out, the new Disney Pixar movie coming out this summer. I mean, I love Disney. I love Pixar. They very rarely miss. I think Cars 2 was a miss, but that's probably about the only one for me. But, uh, yeah, I don't know if you've seen the previews for Inside Out. I mean, it's a wonderful idea, just what the voices inside of your head are telling you to do. Okay, I know what you're talking about now. And done in such a Disney way to where it's cute, a little bit sassy. You know, it's fun. I think it's going to be good. I okay. just hope it doesn't go too far with the whole inside thing and turn into like an Osmosis Jones uh, type of thing. Yeah, I actually kind of liked Osmosis Jones. I, I thought like that Osmosis was pretty Jones, underrated. But, but uh, I, I see what you're saying. I hope yeah. that too. But keep I trust in different. Pixar. Keep I trust in Pixar that I, it'll be yeah. fresh, it'll be lively, and they take a, a really entertaining idea. So, summer of 2015. It's for sure. Prepare, Grundle, to get inside my head. Wow. That kind of gives me goosebumps. All right. Mm. Nice. Your turn. Um. Uh, Huge fan of Dragon Ball Z. Okay, love it. They've got a new movie coming out. It's um, you know, it, it Dragon Ball Z gets a lot of flack, and there's and there's a reason for that because, you know, Akira himself forgets the plot line, but uh, this this new one looks really cool. They are kind of just it's called the that's what I know about it so far. It's a Dragon Ball Z revival of F, and that's the Japanese title I think, and that they're reviving one of the main villains from the story arcs, one of the big story arcs from the uh, Frieza. They're bringing it back. 
So that's got, what that's what the F stands for. Uh, revival of F Frieza. Yeah, and oh, it also okay. has something to do with uh, F Frieza. Is that like F Scott Fitzgerald? I guess. Is this the Great Gatsby? It's gonna be. Is this Dragon Ball Z gonna be the Great Gatsby of Dragon Ball Z movies? Yeah, with Tobey Maguire sitting there going. Gatsby, Gatsby was the greatest man I'd ever seen. <laughs> he talked about Gatsby the same way he talked about Mary Jane and Spider-Man. Like, just about that. He was the same character. This was just Peter Parker Takes Holiday. That's what that was. Oh, Frieza. Yeah. I, I used to love going over to Frieza's cottage. Up, he blew up the planet. and I had nowhere to go. Or you used to eat bologna sandwiches. Yeah. Mm. But, no, I, I'm excited about it. Uh, the, the, it's, the, the F thing I, it comes from... The, the creator Akira being friends with a Japanese metal band called Maximum the Hormone and they have a song called uh, F I think but it's about Frieza and anyway the, the movie is supposed to have a lot more action than any other thing before and a lot of characters that haven't been on the screen in a very long time are coming to do things and uh, I'll tell you so what I like about this man back. is that me and you have a clear I mean you just discussed this a minute ago but me and you have a clear distinct way of thinking from where we're from I love his fresh new crappy things he's throwing out here like <laughs> Goosebumps and Dragon Ball Z. Look, I mean, whenever you were reading Goosebumps and Dragon Ball Z, me and Matt were picking up chicks, okay? And being men. Yeah, and being men, okay. alright? <laughs> I was like washing my armpits because there was hair under there. Okay, alright. And you were just discovering where hair was coming from. That's right. You were just okay. sitting in your room with your Frieza. You're, you're, def you're defeating your own argument. I wasn't old enough to pick up chicks yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, but ahead. the joke's on us now because, man, there. have you seen all those? You've been to those Comic Cons. Girls that like freaking Dragon Ball Z. Man, if I had a good rack, I'd be making all kind of money. <laughs> Hot. Cosplay, man. That's where it's at. But anyway, I'll see your Dragon Ball Z. And I see will see my Dragon Balls up close. I will, and I will. <laughs> yeah. Hey -oh. I'll show you the hair I've grown hey. since then. <laughs> yes, sir. You are correct, sir. I will raise you a Ron Howard, and we'll talk about the movie In the Heart of the Sea. Okay. If we want to talk about old school literature, we're going to talk okay. about Moby okay. Dick. So you take the story of Moby Dick, you kind of Hollywood it up a little bit. But then you get Ron Howard at the helm, and you put Thor on a boat facing Moby Dick. I mean, come on. Come on. Sounds great. So it's Jaws with a whale. It's, uh, and Thor. <laughs> and Thor. Yeah. So everything's bigger and better. Well, yeah. I mean, because Thor could easily take out. I'm going to need a bigger fishing pole. Yeah, yeah. All he needs is his hammer. It's really it's Loki. It's Loki pretending to be Moby Dick. Oh, if it's Loki, it's gonna be it's get sold. Yeah, every woman in the theater. I know. Why exactly. are you a whale, brother? With the misses being first in line. Yes. Yes. It's oh yeah. The ball is now in your court, Sir Grundle. The okay. Dragon Ball. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, no, I mean, you know, I have a, a lot of the big blockbusters coming out this year, like Avengers. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it's it's tough for me because comic book movies are just at the they're just they're all over the place. And there's a lot I'm not excited about, but I am excited about Avengers. I'm oh, sure, honest, I am too. That that teaser trailer is really, really well. It's done oh, really sure. Well. Yeah. I, love I mean, it. if we just want to take two seconds to talk about the Avengers, I mean, mm -hmm. it's the Avengers. It's Josh Whedon directing and writing yeah. again. I mean, come on. The first one is the third highest grossing movie of all time. Yeah. And... Uh, now, here's this a, one is going to be just as good. There's no way in my mind I can see Josh Whedon giving a letdown. I just don't see it. I think it's going to be phenomenal. And at the end of the year, it's going to be a duke out between Star Wars and Avengers for quote unquote popcorn movie of the year. Okay. Now, since Star Wars comes out so late, right. it's probably not going to get as much money because it don't ha it won't have that time. But I bet. I mean, it would, I would just love it if they both came out like at the same day at the beginning of the year, and I'd like to see like 365 days, which one had more money. Now, and Bob Iger would not like to see that. <laughs> well, no, he would here's not. Here's a question I'll pose to you both. Which movie do you think was most responsible for this sort of rise in comic book movies everywhere? The first Iron Man. Yeah. The first Iron Man. It had Man. to be. Yeah. Okay. That was the beginning of the uh, cinematic Marvel universe. I mean. Correct. Yeah. It had, it yeah. had to be the first Marvel. I mean, I let's be honest. Marvel makes good movies. DC makes better animated movies. 
Yeah. That's that's my that's well Marvel right now right, right now right now right now back back in the day DC used to rule and Marvel could do nothing right no they couldn't that's true but now no. they've got things going along and they're doing very good I mean if you can make a Pinocchio song sound super scary and freaky mm-hmm. yeah, you got my attention well Pinocchio is kind of super scary and freaky when you freaky. really think yeah. about it when you really think about it almost like Night of the Living Dummy mm. Goosebumps book. <laughs> Dang man, you just circle. you just got goosebumped. Oh, you got goosebumped. I'm aware if the audience knows this or not, but you just got goosebumped too. I'll tell you what. Mm. All right, Mikey. My number four is Mission Impossible Five. Nailed it. And I'll tell you why for multiple reasons. All right. <laughs> number one, all four of the Mission Impossible movies, in my opinion, are fantastic. That's correct. And they're all four different. They have different directors. Mm-hmm. They're different takes on it, different genres. Not different genres, but just different feels. And every single one of them, from the original to the John Woo movie to uh, the kind of action you want, they've all been great. So you get to Mission Impossible 5, which I hope still comes out next Christmas. I mean, that's still tentative, but I'm hoping that it still gets its release day next Christmas. Uh, or this Christmas, uh, 2015. Um it's directed by Peter McQuarrie, who did the screenplay for Edge of Tomorrow. Now, he also directed Tom Cruise and Jack Reacher, so he's got you know a little bit of pedigree here with, uh, with Tom Cruise. And Edge of Tomorrow was Matt's 2014 uh, movie of the year. And Mission Impossible 5 is the movie I am most looking for. Yes! To. Congratulations. Oh, I just I didn't think anyone would guess that. No, one. it looks fantastic. Now, you know, I think the sequel thing is getting a little bit crazy, but that one is fine with me because all this, four of them is good. Yeah, this one isn't long in the tooth. Yeah. This is yeah. really this has really been a fantastic series. I agree with you. If you'd ask me which one is the better movie, I would have a hard time. I would really have to rewatch them and grade them very I, th- I think Ghost Protocol oh, is the no, best one. It probably is. Yeah. I think Ghost Protocol is. And that doesn't take anything away from the other no, ones, but, it but gets, it's so that good. That whole series gets better yeah. every Think time. about the third one. Philip Seymour Hoffman is the it's bad fantastic. guy. Like, he's your bad guy? Like, that's incredible. I honestly thought when four came out, it said it's not going to be as good as three. And I was wrong. Yeah. And was, now five's coming out. I'm like, how can they beat five? They right. are going to beat it. Uh, well, I hope. I hope it just is not a big letdown. I don't think that it will be, much like the Avengers. It's like, I just don't see how it can be. I guess anything can happen. You have but... four strong hits, and then your fifth movie sucks. Mm-hmm. Only Die Hard has a <laughs> well, look, while we're While we're on this Tom Cruise Ooh, right now, uh, I have to mention a movie that, that he did that I watched um, last year that I thought was just... A, like one of those bad movies, so bad it's good. Jack Reacher. Yeah. This guy that's directing Mission Impossible 5 directed Jack Reacher. It's not bad. No. Uh, okay, look. To me, it plays to that whole, like, stereotype action thing. There's even yeah, lines kind of the 80s in there. thing. When you say Rebel Without a Cause and Lone Wolf, you've got me. That's it. It's I'm an, there. It's a, actually, that is a mid-90s movie that came out too late. Yeah. That is a mid That's why you like it so much. It fits the 90s movie formula of mm-hmm. an action I love yeah. hero. And I'll be honest, I watched it. I loved it. I saw that. I know what you're talking about. It's fantastic. It didn't really seem like it fit right. in today's day and age, yeah. but back in the mid-90s, that thing would have been number one yeah. for months. I think the biggest detriment to that movie was the title of it. Because whenever you were sitting in a theater and you watched that preview, it was like, you know, Tom Cruise driving this car and getting out and putting on the hat and blending in with the crowd. And the co- the car is fooling the cops, but nobody's driving it. Yada, yada, yada. Night yeah. and day. Yeah. Oh, wait. No, yeah. <laughs> well, now Cameron Diaz was not on the back of his crotch rocket in this preview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought, you know what? This seems kind of cool, but it does. It seems very 90s. It's from, like, you know, the uh, days gone by. And then it was like Jack Reacher. Yeah. And it's like, what is this? Like, what in like, you know, they could have they could not come up with a better name than Jack Reacher. If you love 90s movies, you'll love Jack Reacher. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So if it had like a different uh, title, but I think that happens with a lot of movies. Sometimes the title can make or break a movie. That's so. true. All right. So that was my number four, which nailed Matt's one. You got it. You got my number one. Movie I'm not looking forward to. Oh, you're going to splice in with that, huh? I'm sorry. I got to do it. The, there's one of the comic books and everything. Let's do it. Fantastic okay, Four. Okay. All right. I Fantastic get that. Fantastic Four. Yeah. No. Fantastic Four is on my hate list as well. Yeah. That is that is on yeah. my list. For I, I, I think it's going to bomb. And I think yeah. Marvel 
Disney Marvel's going to get those rights back immediately. Yeah, I think exactly. that's the death nail for Fox. And that's Fox what's has going X-Men, on. that's what's successful. Mm-hmm. They're going to try to resurrect Fantastic Four. For sure. They're even going to try to do a crossover with X-Men to see if that would save the franchise. Not but work. to be honest, right. I don't think... Well, I, because I think X-Men and Fantastic Four are in its own universe right now. And so that new mm-hmm. Fantastic Four is going to try to fit into that yeah. X-Men universe. And unfortunately, even if it does have good ideas and good people in it, unfortunately, Marvel is competing against itself. And it cannot... If it's not going to fit into Big Brother's universe, into the, this official canon that they put out there, it's going to sink. Kind of like what's happened with Spider-Man. You know, they want to try to put Spider-Man well, in the in the in the universe, and the Amazing Spider-Man just isn't in the universe. They don't want to stick Garfield into that universe, so now they're stuck with: Do we make another movie, Amazing Spider-Man movie, or do we recast Spider-Man to put him in there? Do we put the the Hispanic Spider-Man that they have now that's in the you know universe? Well, in there? to be fair, he's not the Amazing Spider-Man. That's a different universe. Right, that's what I'm saying. Though. I mean, yeah, yeah, so, so anyway, back to the Fantastic Four. I don't know. To me, to me, if we're going to talk about Spider-Man for just a second and get back to Fantastic Four, I like what they did with the Hulk in the new Avengers movies and not giving Peter another origin movie because we've seen it so right. many times. I don't need that. Just put him in there like you do with the Hulk. Right. He works better that way. Right. What is the fifth movie on your list that you're looking forward to uh, in 2015? Yeah, you broke rank on me there. Oh, well, that's okay. Is that it? No, I'm not you looking, looking forward to much. Okay, oh, that's fine. Well, that's Jurassic fine. Park. Well, yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm down with that. You down with that one? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I just have a little list here of ones that are coming out. Everybody knows them. Star Wars. We got Avengers. Talk about Jurassic World. The new two, Terminator. No. Two thumbs. No. Screw really? that crap. <laughs> Don't want to see it. Even though I like Alan Taylor, who, you know, he's directing it, and he's the one that's responsible for uh, Game of Thrones. Screw that new Terminator. I don't need no another origin story with that crap. It looks stupid. Hunger Games, who cares? Insurgent, who cares? Thank you. Maze Runner. The first one was pretty good, so the second one I kind of might be interested in. Jupiter Ascending, you know, new Wachowski Brothers movie. Uh, Cloud Atlas didn't really like for me, so it's like, whatever. Uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, but I don't, I don't have a vagina. I'm not the fifth movie that, that I'm looking forward to this year, besides all that other stuff, is the Entourage movie. And that's another one. I had totally forgotten about that when mm-hmm. I was doing this. And Entourage is a, is a show that Mikey and I have both immensely enjoyed from HBO. It may have been the last HBO show that I've enjoyed that well. Mm-hmm. And so now they're coming out with a movie, finally. Finally, yeah. I, I would love to see how that ends. Yeah, uh, the preview is very good. It looks just like you would think an Entourage movie would. Like, it was exciting to see, you know, the guys back together again. Uh, for me, and I'm sure Matt would probably feel the same way, I don't care how much time has passed. To me, it's not a money grab. Like, I like these characters, no. and I want to watch it. And I hope that the people that make the movie, and I, and I think just from watching and, and reading about the production over the past few years, I feel that they get it, too. Like, they wanted to make sure that the script was good, that it wasn't... You know, if they really wanted to make money, they could have just put it out right after the show ended. Right. They wanted to make sure everything fit well. And according to the missus, who loves Sex in the City, mm-hmm. the Sex in the City movies were good. Right. And they came out, what, years later after the show? Right. Now, I, I don't know because I didn't watch them on my own. I just heard from somebody else... That the Sex in the City movies were sure. pretty good. Okay. All right, all right. I mean, yeah, it's just just this guy Check I know. Check his apartment right just, now. Just this guy <laughs> I know. Right now. This guy I know would agree with you oh, that the okay. Sex in the City movies were good, but I don't. <laughs> I don't have his phone number in my pocket, so I don't know. Uh, okay, I, don't I think know. I have his number right now. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's Entourage, it does. <laughs> Entourage comes out summer of 2015. If you never watched the TV show, watch it and oh, then go watch the movie. Watch it. Definitely, it's so much fun. It's, it's fantastic. Just a fun. It is movie. It does have some good story plots here or there, but mm-hmm. most of the episodes just. What would you do if you were rich and you had all the money? Yeah. I mean, seriously. More than anything, it makes you want to just go to Hollywood and be a movie star. <laughs> yeah. Like, like not like an actor, not like a working actor. Like, just, yeah, like Matt said, if you just had all the money and your friends with you, like, what kind of crap would you get into? Right. But I believe that weekend you will see Mikey and I both in the theater yes. with Goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And on that note of TV shows that are maybe, you know, going to get a movie, uh, I was a fan of Party Down. And that, that series mm-hmm. ended after it. Well, it does have a movie coming it's out. second season, and it has a movie coming out. So yeah. um, I'm really mm-hmm. excited to see that. Yeah. I was a fan of that one. Okay. Now, I think we already talked about what movies we're not wanting to see, correct? Well, I do have one small little thing that I want to say real quick. If you just give me a moment to rant, okay? Go right I'm ahead. Rant. I've got goosebumps already. 
there's lots of stupid sequels coming out these days, and there's a lot of movies that are coming out in 2015. I'm just going to run down some crap that nobody wants to see. Mordecai? Come on. How many different times is Johnny Depp going to play a stupid character? Um, Whatever. Hot I'm going to have to watch that with the missus. Oh, I mean, I like Johnny Depp. He's a great actor, but just just act. Just put. Just be in a drama uh, act. Be in a real like. Stop creating stupid Willy Wonkas and stop putting him in a different movie. Funny pants. Yeah, Hot Tub Time Machine Two. <laughs> the second is the second best exotic marigold hotel. So now they've taken a uh, art house British movie and made a sequel to it. That doesn't happen. A new Paranormal Activity. It's called Paranormal Activity: The Ghost Dimension. Aren't they all about the I, ghost dimension? I haven't seen a single Paranormal like, Activity. What is this? Some type of reverse thing one. like the others now, where the ghosts are. Getting haunted by humans? That's crap. Paul Blart, Mall Cop 2, please. Pitch Perfect 2, Ted 2, Insidious 3, Magic Mike XXL. Stop, stop. Ted what? 2? Yeah. I may have to see. Well, you are a too. family guy. Uh, I may you have, are a family you guy. Seth I don't like Seth MacFarlane. I kind of like him. Did, did you see a Ted 2? I would see it. I liked. Ted okay, so the first one I liked because I liked Mark Wahlberg and I thought the humor was okay. And because you want a Thunder Buddy. I do want a Thunder Buddy, okay. but it's just not necessary. They're remaking Poltergeist. It's got Sam Rockwell in it. Come oh. on, no. And my biggest crap point of the entire year is that they're remaking Point Break. Besides Die Hard, which is the ultimate dude movie, the my favorite dude movie is Point Break. You, it's. I mean, it is. It is uh, Keanu Reeves and um, uh, Patrick Swayze at their best. Now they've got some guy named Edgar Ramirez who played Ares in Wrath of the Titans, and some jabroni named Luke Bracy. No, do not remake Point Break. Anybody that's listening to this, do not go see Point Break. Crouching Tiger, Hidden uh, Hidden Dragon Two. Oh. Come on. They are making a new vacation movie with all of the Griswolds. Yes. Time out. Is that yes. This year? I didn't see that. Yes, 2015. That yes. What? Really? Yes. What is it? What now, is it this, this, it's just called Vacation. And, and once again, this is a tentative release for around Thanksgiving of, of this year. Chevy Chase in it. Chevy the Chase. Cast. Yes, Beverly D'Angelo. Yes. In. Yes. Yeah, no, I'm no, there yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah. I'm there. I don't there. understand it. I don't, there are I've never... three movies <laughs> I'm looking forward yeah. to seeing yeah. in theaters. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. may be the one I've seen the most. Now. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. could just be MI5. Uh, there's a new Alvin and the Chipmunks movie, Road Chip. Nobody will care there except your wife. There are four movies. <laughs> oh, <I'm> whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, there's tentatively... Hold on. Hold on. Who's going to be Rusty? I, I can't let Vacation go. Who's going to be Rusty? Um, If I'm... Uh, Is it going to be Michael Anthony Hall? If I'm not mistaken, it's Ed Helms. Oh, okay. From the office. All right, that's fine. Uh, okay. um, that's all right, fine. All right. And uh, there's tentatively a new Friday the Thirteenth movie coming out, which I'll I will love that. You know, I got a little soft spot for some sequels. And then there's that Peanuts movie, which I'm crossing my fingers is going to be good because Charles Schultz's grandson is responsible for overseeing it, and he said that he did not want any stupid crap that happened like in the Smurfs movies and the Alvin and the Chipmunks. Oh, yeah, he wanted to yeah. keep it just like the old movies and specials and comic strips, but just with computer generated graphics. It would be interesting to see maybe on video for me. But if they are going to keep it close to the original stuff that we've seen, because uh, together, uh, I think Mikey and uh, we, we've all actually seen, we got together and saw the Christmas special. Yeah, we two Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving ones. Thanksgiving specials. Yeah. So we're actually, we do like Charlie Brown. Sure, I watch him every year. Charlie Brown. Yeah. It's tradition for yeah. us. So overall, where, how would you rank 2015 as expectations go? Is it an A for expectations? B, C, D? Where... Where do you, how excited are you for this movie year? C plus. C plus. Okay. Yeah, because there's only like really one or two movies I'm looking forward to. Correct. And, and one of those probably isn't coming to the theaters around here. Okay. You know? Well, Fast and Furious 7 is. Yes, well, you'll see Furious 7. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I'll be there, but I mean, you know, you got the, <laughs> you got, I'm, I, I'm sure mm -hmm. Goosebumps is not coming to the theaters. And then you've got, you know, Dragon Ball Z, which is something I'm going to have to find on the internet. So, got you. Okay, Mike. Um, I'm going to actually disagree a little bit, and you'll probably disagree with me too, but I'm actually going to give this year an A+. Plus. Mm. And, Whoa. and I'm ah. gonna and I'm gonna tell you why. Let me hear it. No, no, no. And, and this and he's really going to disagree with me on this one, but I want to throw this out there. It's one of those things where overall the whole year doesn't have a lot that's really got me excited. I agree with that. But the weight of Star Wars 
really counterbalances all of that. And it's just like even and this doesn't have anything to do with Star Wars going to be good or bad. If we're just talking like anticipation, I mean, it's the new Star Wars movie. So like the buzz already a year in advance is crazy. So you have to think like. I mean, I'm one of these people that wants to see it. I will be there. Like, I'm okay with the Disney canon. And I'm... It, it, like, the amount of buzz between the Avengers and that movie will counterbalance some of the other crap that's out there. Now, are you saying an A for audiences everywhere, or are you personally... I would say both. I mean, look okay. at that. Those two movies right there are liable to make, you know, a billion and a half dollars yeah, domestically. Sure. Easily. Easily. You know, I mean, they both can make 500 million, uh, you know. But do you think Batman versus Superman is going to do good? Well, that's 2016. We'll get to that. But yeah, all of the, is the, whether they're good or not, whether they're good movies or entertaining movies, that's to be seen later. But there's no denying the fact that these movies, like Batman vs. Superman, is going to make a buttload of money. I mean, people go and see these movies. That's why they continue to make these movies. They make globs and globs and globs of money, and they're not going to stop. Look at Green Lantern. It sucked, but it still made a lot of money. It really did. Maybe not as much as, you know, Adventures or Dark Knight, but I mean, it was, it still got its budget back. I'm going to say overall a B. Uh, I agree with Mikey that there aren't that many movies coming out to look forward to. However, the movies that are coming out, like you said, are worth seeing. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. So I would rank it just a little bit high because Mission Impossible 5, Entourage, mm -hmm. and now mm -hmm. that I know the vacation mm -hmm. maybe oh, out. Wait, yeah, those yeah, types of movies mm -hmm. really get me excited. Now, there's only three movies, though, so it can't be an A. It cannot be an no, A. Can't give it but name. because those movies, I do look forward to them, and that's three of them, which in this day and age, as you said, where Hollywood just rehashing the same old stories over and over and over again, it's nice. And even though these are rehashes almost, except for Entourage, I would say, it's just a continuation. Sure. But we're still excited about these, and the excitement level would raise it above a C for me. If, mm -hmm. if, if it didn't have those three, there's a lot of other movies I like to go see too, but I can wait till they come out. You know, I can wait. Yeah. You know, I, I can even wait another week once they've been out in theaters to go watch them too. Mm -hmm. Will I go see them? Yes, I'll go see them. But am I looking forward to it? Not, not exactly. Right. It's like a popcorn movie. Theme. Right. So I would, I would rank it a B. So we have different rankings there, so that's interesting. That's good. I like that. Yeah. A variety is the spice of life, right? It I is. think regardless, the past three years, it's been like the best couple of years to be a nerd. Yeah. It's never been more in a, a, a time where you can be more accepted for being a nerd, you know? Oh, yeah, I'm Cause, telling I mean, you. Because just talk about the 90s again for a second, superhero movies were stupid. Mm -hmm. And now, look at it. Except for Batman Returns. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Please come back next Saturday for another round of Saturday Morning Samoflange. And as usual, if you have any questions for any of us, anything you want us to answer, any comments, put it down in the comment section below. And if you have any problems with my top five, you suck. What, 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 what,